Hello? Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, in our last class, we are discussing about the the problem of uh, data access synchronization. And what we found is, uh, if we write high level languages, I mean uh, high level instructions, then uh, actual instruction may be uh, in the background after compilation. It may consist of multiple uh, hardware instructions. And uh, there can be, while executing that, there can be interrupts, timer interrupts, which can preempt that particular process. So if I consider a particular simple incrementation of a variable, a shared variable, by some amount, if I consider it to be a very small uh, instruction, I mean, uh, very simple instruction, that too might be interrupted while it is trying to read, update, and write onto the memory location. And whenever multiple processes try to do the same uh, on that particular shared variable, that might lead to inconsistency. And what uh, and that is what we call as race condition. And what we found is uh, if there is such race conditions that arises, we call it as critical sections. OK, so critical section, uh, say if you have got access to a shared variable in your entire function, you may try to consider the whole function to be critical or you may try to specify that particular instruction or statement where it involves the access to the shared resource as critical. So it's up to you. So uh, let us assume that we specify those statements to be critical. And why it is critical? Because until unless they are uh, handled properly that might lead to inconsistency. So what we found is uh, whenever we think of, uh, so there should be some mechanism which will try to address this and will resolve these problems. Even though sharing of resources is allowed and multiple uh, processes can concurrently do that. So the simple assumptions are relative speed. We cannot assume that uh, some processes are, uh, we will be getting more CPU, less CPU. So no assumptions are made during the solution, no indivisibility. We cannot assume that even if it is a small instruction, high level instruction, this should be atomic. So no such assumptions uh, you programmer can make and bounded use any process which is accessing or which is uh, inside the critical section means it is accessing that critical resource. It is assumed that it will be uh, eventually releasing it. So it is not uh, so this is not a kind of a security problem that it holds and it never gives it off. So they are fair in the sense if they enter into the critical section. So within a finite time that will that uh, they will exit the critical section and allow others to also use it. <coughs> and the mechanisms, uh, whatever the solutions we design, they must follow these conditions mutual exclusion. So the, because it's a shared resource, we know that this should be accessed in a mutually exclusive way. So we cannot force that. Uh, so this is one primary requirement and which makes a problem non-trivial. Progress, This so in this class we'll see some examples to which we see that uh, although it seems to be very trivial conditions, but there are cases where even these few simple conditions, uh, it becomes difficult to satisfy and that becomes a challenge to propose solutions. So what is pro what progress means if one process uh, say is willing to access the critical resource say maybe every second, but the other processes are willing to access it once in an hour. So it doesn't matter in what pace they should use. So they should be able to so one the process which wants to access it uh, more frequently should be allowed to do that without uh, 
getting interfered by the other processes pace in entering the critical section. And definitely because uh, you are probably having some kind of uh, some other variables to which you try to access it. So they should it should be deadlock free and it should be live block free also. So we'll see the cases as it occurs. So in this class, we'll be mainly talking about the uh, algorithmic approach here. OK. In this class and then later on, we'll talk about the same the solving the same problem using semaphores and monitors. So this first approach, uh, as you can see here, there is a shared resource R. OK, so this R can be anything. This can be an integer. This can be a file record. So this is shared. This is a shared resource. And. As you can see that CSR is the critical section corresponding to two processes. So this is process P0 and this is process P1. So there are two processes P0 and P1 and each of them they have got a critical section CSR. So this critical section is associated with the access to the critical resource R. <coughs> so as you can see here, there are multiple instructions here and there are multiple instructions later on also. So this is the point uh, where they access a critical resource. And there is a typical uh, statement that I have written here. Parent means parallel end. So this is just to denote uh, this is not a C level uh, function. Is just to denote that this par begin means uh, P0 P1 means that means at this stage we would like to access, uh, I mean, like to ensure that P0 P1 are both concurrently getting executed. So this is what it means. So both process runs simultaneously. So this is the P0's code, this is the P1's code, both will run simultaneously. That's all. And both have the same critical section associated with R. So the simple logic is, and this while one means, so they repeatedly will try to ent enter into the critical section. Okay. So the, they repeatedly will, tr will try to enter into the critical section multiple times. So the idea is now in this case, uh, now we have to ensure that when P0 is accessing critical section, P1 should not enter and vice versa. So the simplest way to do this is to use another shared variable called turn. Okay. And turn should get some value, uh, maybe 0 or 1. We have initialized to 1, uh, it to 0. And probably you can see the code. So, what this P0 does, what is the intention? What it does actually in this line? Hello? It is waiting to enter. Uh, it is waiting to enter, but the thing is the turn plays the trick. So the value of the turn, uh, if it is zero, that means it is P zero turn. If the value of turn is one, it is P one turn. That is what it means. So P zero wants to enter. This means P zero wants to enter into the critical section. But before that, it checks. What it checks? Definitely, there is no point of checking my own value. I should rather check whether it is the other processes turn. If it is the other processes turn. That means if turn is not equal to zero or I could have written turn is equal to equal to one, then this basically waits. There is a semicolon here. That means this forces the process to wait. That's all. But if it is not the case, that means if this is uh, uh, if it is zero, that means it is its turn. And in, in case it is its turn, then it can enter the critical section. So once it executes the critical section. Means currently the value of turn is definitely zero. So after that, to be generous or I mean to be fair enough and to avoid any kind of monopolization, this will set the value of turn to one. That's all. OK, so let me use it. And after I have, so if you are not using that, it checks here. If you are not using, then I'll use the resource and then I'll set your turn. And this process also does the same. Let me check if it is uh, if you are using. If it is not your turn, then I'll use it and I'll set your turn. So that is what it does. So that is a very simple logic and they will do it uh, in parallel and no matter in what way they are interleaved. Because it might happen that 
this will be executed first and then it is this is scheduled then again this is scheduled then this is scheduled whatever it is so whatever is interleaving so if we consider this solution <coughs> will it ensure mutual exclusion Will this solution ensure mutual exclusion? That means <coughs> no two process, both the processes cannot access the critical section. Can it be ensured? Hello? Hello? Is that guaranteed? Are you getting me? Will it guarantee mutual exclusion? Can it happen that both the processes like this process also is here? This process is here and this process is here. Can it happen ever? Please answer. Hello. Are you getting or? I am talking to the class. Can you uh, are you getting me sir, or? Sir, if the comparison is of multiple statements, then problem can be occurred. If uh, one of them changes the value and the comparison is still working on the other. Now tell me which comparison you are talking about. Turn not equal to zero. Turn not equal to one. Uh, see, the point is, turn is a single variable. So, can it take both the values simultaneously? It will be either zero. It will be either one, right? Yes, sir. So, if that is the case, so can it ensure? So, just noting this, can I make sure that? No, sir, I'm saying that maybe the flag variable means the uh, the conditional flags will be set after the turn is working. And the other one changes the value at that moment only. No, uh, are, you are you talking about setting this initial value or what? No, no, sir. There are set of conditional flags now after the comparison operation in assembly has uh, flags N, Z, V, C. So Z, Z flag, if it doesn't, if it sets itself and the other core um, resets it. it means uh, it sets it too high then what will we do now see the point so this is the ram right this is the ram and this is the value where the turn is stored right this is either zero say this is currently zero yes, so sir. now you may have doesn't matter what you have so you have got one cpu or two cpu doesn't matter so this is p0 is running here in cpu and in this case p1 is running here in this cpu so this access to the memory location is serialized right yes sir. access to the memory location is trivially serialized you cannot do it parallelly you can run it but you cannot do it parallelly so the thing is if both say assume that both are checking for this while loop this while loop now this is now zero so who, who will find it to be false yes which process will find it to be false p0 will find it false yes sir so P0 will find it false. So P0 will automatically come here, right? But yes, P1, what, what P1 will do? P1 will get stuck here because it finds that it is it is not equal to one. It will get stuck. Say for example, you have scheduled uh, this, the scheduler has scheduled P1 first, right? If it has yes. scheduled P1 first, then P1 will find that it is zero. It will simply wait here. It will get stuck here, and then it will get suspended so some kind it's not suspended it's basically busy waiting doesn't matter so p1 p0 will get a chance and it will find it is zero it will simply enter so my point is can both the process enter simultaneously at this position definitely not no. now since p0 executes this and it comes here it sets turn to one so it makes it one yes. makes one it one and then it again does something else again comes <clears throat> whatever it is now, because it is busy waiting, so whenever it gets a chance to get scheduled, it finds that it is one. Now, this will come here and it will execute the CSR. But when this P0 is in CSR, you, you can guarantee that P1, P0 is not in its CSR. That is what I mean. 
Mm. Because it is strictly, it can take one value. It can either be satisfied in P0 or it can be P1. So both cannot bypass this while loop and come to the CSR simultaneously. Is that fine? Sir, but uh, we, uh, do we have a hardware support for this shared in? Because if it's not... <clears throat> there is, so see, this is, a, this is a pure algorithmic approach, as I mentioned. So do not assume any kind of additional hardware or specialized hardware uh, supported for this. The so only the cache yeah. and the registers will revolt uh, against this, no? Which one? The cache yes. and the registers, because registers mm. store these values and the optimizer will also uh, maybe maybe cause a problem, maybe, because cache is always problem. No, I'm, I'm not getting, see, whatever is the case in the RAM, so the first thing is in the RAM, you have got the memory location which stores the shared variable value of turn. Yes, so sir. that is having just one copy. No matter how many CPUs you have got, how many processes are competing for this, <coughs> that is having just one value. Yes, sir. But uh, in multiple cores, we have L1 caches are uh, for each core. Then that will be a problem. And saying. See, this is uh, my point is when you are using sh uh, shared memory, yes, let us for simplicity assume that you are not, uh, I got your point. You, uh, so you, you are telling that I, I copied from the memory location and copied in the cache and I keep using from that, right? Is that yes. what you say? Yes, so sir. when you deal with shared memory, because you are not the sole person who is using it, so there yes, should sir. be some different, you know, uh, cache uh, synchronization or I mean cache coherence issues that need to be handled. So and let us assume so that you need uh, hardware support, no? Yeah, that some hardware support or some kind of uh, protocol is required. So how the cache will be used in case you have declared something as shared. So the oh. thing is, if you just if you just declare it as, as INTX, that will be dealt in a different way. But if you write here shared in, so it is not as simple as that. We'll show that how you can share it. But when it is a when you are dealing with shared pieces, so the way you will be utilizing the cache will be different. Because then it will be uh, cache coherence problems will occur. Yes, sir. You have got a shared piece. Now you have got a copy of that and I have also got a copy of that. Now yes. I update it. You have yes. not updated it. Yes. So now whenever I update it, will it uh, will the system go on and copy it back to the memory location? Or it will defer it for some time. So, so those are uh, cache coherence related problems. So there are algorithms for doing it consistently. Let us assume that Okay, that is, that is not the issue. Let us assume that there is no cache that is currently used and make a very simple model that we have got the RAM, we have got the shared piece of data stored in some uh, RAM location that, that is shared and now processor accessing it. I got your point. I, I got your point, but that is uh, a issue of cache coherence problem, which definitely will not be the same if you are dealing with shared piece of data. Okay. Got the point? So let us first uh, uh, ignore th those uh, uh, complexities because uh, that that is again, that is a part of cache coherence as I mentioned. There are different algorithms to deal with it. So whenever somebody writes, will it be uh, copied back? So whenever it is copied back, then what others will do? So they will be sent some signals and they, you please hold on. So get a new fresh copy and do it. So those are other, other issues. Okay. So right now let us assume that we have got a simple uh, model we have got the RAM and and this is how they are accessing it they can directly access it like that but one by one simultaneously they cannot do that so now is the multiple uh, mutual exclusion problem resolved if I do this approach yes sir. yes sir but now let us consider the progress property will the progress property also be satisfied through this the problem that I mentioned, say P0 wants to access it, uh, say uh, once in a minute, but P1 wants to access it once in a once in an hour. So, whose space will be dominated? Whose space will dominate the progress? The one in a minute. Yeah. One in a no, one in a second. One uh, in a sorry, second. one in an hour. Because you see, uh, it, so the point is, it is strictly alternating. If I get my turn, I cannot re-enter it until unless you take your turn, right? You see, I take my turn, but before I leave, I, I set it to your turn. And if you don't enter, I cannot re-enter once again, even if I try. 
even if I keep trying. Got the point? So the progress is basically dominated by the slower process. Slower means uh, which have less frequent access to the critical resource. Is that point clear? Are you getting me? Yes, sir. So this is what happens. So here. So P1 and P0 P1 strictly alternates. OK, P0 P1 strictly alternates and the pace of the execution is dictated by the slower process. And at the same time, there is another problem. If one fails, say being in the critical section, if a if a particular process fails, then what is going to happen? So P0 fails. Terminates abnormally and definitely uh, uh, this turn one will never be one and then P2 will remain indefinitely. It will get into a problem. So these are the issues or the problems of this particular uh, case. So what is the underlying problem here? The underlying problem is that we are trying to uh, deal with the willingness, the state of different the two processes. Right now we are considering the two process solution and uh, we are not making the complex case of n number of processes. Even for two processes, these are the cases. So the thing is the willingness of both the processes is basically uh, tracked by a single variable. That is the problem. So the simple solution can be we can think of. Shared int flag. So we can think of having two different variables. Say we call it as now flag zero flag one. And we say that flag zero will store the state of process zero and flag one will store the state of process one, right? Because now if you have so now if the process zero wants to uh, enter as many times it can do that. Without uh, you know the other process need to enter. Uh, say alternatively. Or one after the other. So if that is the case, how how do uh, how will we uh, uh, change this? While one, and if this is a critical section, how we are going to modify this? So this is for process zero, and this is for process one. How do you do this? So what it will check now? Here. Maybe we, what we have started and I have ended two very two billions. Uh, so what it will check? What it will check actually? Uh, both of these second process started or ended. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, the so flag falls falls. Both are false now. So both are false means what I need to check that whether flag. So this P0 will check that whether flag one. Flag one is false or a flag one is true. If flag one is true. Then it has to wait, right? Is that fine? P0 will check whether flag one is true. That means the other process is true. Other process is true means that process is willing and it has probably entered into the critical section. That is what it means. Are you getting the point? Yes, sir. And this process will just do the reverse flag. Zero. If it equals to true, then it will wait. That's the case. Now the only difference is instead of just uh, putting the whole thing in a single variable flag, uh, single variable that we earlier called turn, we just uh, stored it in two different variables and in a Boolean variable set false true whatever. So if this is true, then what is going to happen? So uh, if this is uh, this condition is not true in case of P0, then what it does? It comes here. That means it is sure that the other process is not entering into the critical section. So what it will do first? The first step is it should set its willingness. So you first check that if you are not. Uh, so it's just like if you check that uh, if you are not taking the class. Then what I do? So say maybe there is a single classroom and there are two two doors and through this maybe I enter and through this maybe TD enter, right? 
So if I say that TD TD's door is open, that means he is not willing. This is false. Then I enter and close my door. And meanwhile, TD comes and finds that this door is closed. He will simply wait outside. It is something like this. So the first thing is if I find that TD's door is open, that means this is false. So I come here and what is the first thing that I do? <clears throat> I should set my willingness. That means I should set flag zero to what should I do? True. It will be set into true. True means I I just uh, stop the other person to enter, and I signify through that. Okay. So P zero will check this, and will set this, and P one will check this, and try to set this. And once it is done, that means I know I am sure that the other person is not willing, and I have set my willingness. It will stop him. Let me just access the critical section, and before I leave, what should I do? Flag. Which flag should I set? Which flag should I set now? The flag of other first. Hmm. Flag zero or one? Zero to false. Sir, flag one to two. Now, why should I? So the point is, what did I do before entering the critical section? I have set my flag to true. So before I leave, what should I do? I I should just uh, you know open this door. That's all. I should open the door. If I open the door, that means that is enough for TD to know that okay, I am not taking the class, and he can enter and take the class, right? Got the point? Yes, sir. So let me set my flag to false, or I just open my door. That's all. And on the other hand, if TD finds that my door is uh, set to false, that means my door is open, he will set. set his flag or his door to true now he will close the door take the class because say for example this classroom is the critical resource r both wants to share and then he will reset his flag so as false that's all so if this is the solution and say uh, we, we we may do it multiple times in a day or multiple times in a week We we keep on doing that, okay? So now, so first thing is uh, what will be the initial values of flags? It may be set false false. If we set false false, so will it be? So if we set false false, will it ensure mutual exclusion? No sir. Will it ensure mutual exclusion? Because you see both are false. So it says that. Uh, so it might happen. You see. That this is getting executed first, while flag one equals to two. So P zero process is scheduled, and this is getting executed. And it after it checks that this is flag flag one is false, so it is here, and it gets preempted. Now P one gets scheduled, and P one checks for this while loop, and it finds that flag zero is also false, and it is now here. so can you find the the problem here so now both has successfully bypass that uh, you know waiting condition both has bypassed it and both are both are here so both will set their willingness because nobody stops them and both starts entering the class so that now there is a chaos so this simple solution trying to dissociate the states of the two process using two different variables what it will end up will it be able to ensure mutual exclusion will it be able to ensure mutual exclusion hello no sir so that's okay so if this is a solution then the mutual exclusion property cannot be ensured so you try to resolve one problem you get into another problem and what about the progress property as you can see here each process enters so the thing is earlier the problem that we face that if i am willing to enter it once in a second and you are willing to enter it you know maybe once in a hour so i want to take class maybe uh, every day and he wants to take class once in a week say for example so what is going to happen 
earlier in the earlier case in the previous case it was strictly alternating so if he takes the class only he, he i mean like handing over the key so he hands over the key only then i can take the class and once i take the class the simple protocol is you should you should hand over the key to him and he can take his class in his uh, according to his schedule so that was a previous case to solve it we created two doors there are two separate kind of locks willingness locks or whatever now you create other problem but the now now the problem is if he is not at all willing to take the class or he has completed the syllabus so i can keep on entering the uh, enter the, so that's a case say if this flag one is always false doesn't matter so i never have to wait i'll set my flag to true use the critical section set it to false again if i go back if the other process is not willing at all i need not have to wait again i come back set it to true and keep on doing that so i can keep on repeatedly uh, using it and even if this process has not entered even a single time are you got have you got the point so this is the problem so successive entry is not a problem but what is the other problem if one process fails inside the critical section then the other process gets blocked okay because same means uh, if i set my uh, willingness to true and then somehow i get crashed here at this point so i'll never be able to set my false to uh, my flag to false so if if the other person comes then he finds that uh, there is a big problem so he cannot enter because he will he will simply get stuck here at this point okay so the progress property is partly resolved i mean the, the problem is solved but the mutual exclusion is not guarantee so this is this cannot be a solution so are you getting the uh, problem so we have got only just two processes and we have got just one resource and we are trying to ensure all the four properties uh, using purely algorithmic approach you, 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 you using pure logic that's all and you are every time you are trying to come up with some solution you, you are getting stuck so what can be the immediate modification to this immediate modification is because uh, why the problem occurs here mutual exclusion fails because you have set this to false initially and you are trying to uh, check it and both might be able to check it successful and both might enter so the only way to get rid of it i mean uh, one probable way to get rid of it is you can bring it outside here so before the while flag 1 or while flag 0 is checked let us set the flags my own flags to be true <coughs> okay <coughs> so before you check whether he is willing uh, or whether he is taking the class you, you basically shut the door and, and then you try to check so you enter shut the door and try to see that whether that person is also taking the class can that be a solution will it uh, will it ensure mutual exclusion if i bring the flag 0 to and flag 1 to before the while loop something like this got the change here so these are small steps which one try to make to ensure a solution which will ensure all the four properties and will ensure consistent access to the shared space will it solve the problem are you getting me will it guarantee mutual exclusion no sir no sir why not now making this flag 0 equals to true and flag 1 equals to true before while uh, will it still happen that the both process enters the critical section simultaneously both are here at the same point of i mean at, at some point of time is that possible will that be possible yes sir simply not because you see uh, say for example p0 executes this flag uh, p0 executes this flag 0 set to true gets preempted and p1 also executes this flag flag 1 equals to true and then get, gets preempted now again p0 is scheduled and it checks while flag 1 equals to true so what it will find flag 1 equals to it is indeed true 
what it will do now at this point what it will do it will wait then p1 gets again scheduled it will check flag 0 is true or not well it will found what it will found uh, find this is indeed true because it, this process has already set it to true so this will also wait are you getting my point in the extreme case both flag 0 is true and flag 1 is true is set and both process will wait in the while loop is that fine can you are you convinced with that yes sir but how long they will wait how long they will wait now when this flag 1 which is true will be false when this flag 1 will be false only when the process p1 will enter the critical section it will set it to false right and when this flag 1 uh, flag 0 will be false only if the p0 is allowed to enter the critical section and it will set it to false so are you getting some analogy with the problems that we discussed in our last classes it's a deadlock it's a deadlock situation so you are waiting p0 is waiting for a condition which need to be set by p1 and p1 is also waiting for a condition which is need to be set by p0 but none of them can proceed until unless they you know get that condition satisfied so it's basically it's it not take to take the system to any other points so it will simply the both the process will end up in a deadlock situation but mutual exclusion is it guaranteed here mutual exclusion yes. is it it is definitely guaranteed because you can easily Uh, verify and see that it is guaranteed so now just now in the second attempt what we found mutual exclusion was not guaranteed but there is a violation of the progress property i mean uh, there is uh, there are other pro other problems i mean uh, sorry the mutual exclusion is not guaranteed but the progress is more or less fine but now we, to ensure the mutual exclusion we found that deadlock occurred okay so mutual exclusion is guaranteed and but the both process willingness uh, before they executes so this leads to a deadlock so this is what it means so there is a deadlock situation here so are you getting the uh, problem so what can be the next change that we can make yes uh, what can be the next change incremental change we change the initial values one is true and other is false uh see then but that, that can also if that is the case you say that i i make it to true so you say that let this be yes. false and this be true right that is what you say yes yes uh, so if this is if this happens if p1 is not at all willing then what is going to happen if p1 mm -hmm. is not at all willing so p1 waits for p0 waits for how long how long it need to wait um matlab it never gets a chance then yeah so then again the progress property is, is violated yeah you don't end up with a deadlock but you basically end up with a live lock that is called live lock so you you know that okay i know that once he gets a chance you will get you will provide me a chance and the things will start but can you guarantee that how long you have to wait you don't know but definitely you know that okay this is not a problem whenever he is willing I, i'll get a chance after he is done but this never happens so this is a uh, again try to uh, trying to resolve the problem but you end up with live locks instead of dead locks is that okay uh, sir hello mm. yes uh, what happens if we declare the shared int flag as true comma false no no that is wh whatever you do you, you make it true comma false but the thing is the one which is true that means you are forcing that person to take the first chance right you make some yes. somebody so you want that process maybe p0 or p1 to to be the first person to enter the critical section and then you start then it starts alternating but if that does not happen then the other process just stops
Sir, we may think as uh, we are giving priority if we given true and false. Priority? No, we, we, we cannot. That is so th there is an underlying assumption. So you cannot make any assumptions regarding the you know, priority of the process, which process should be. So it should be all fair. That is okay. the point. You cannot give any other. So th that's why the assumptions are listed earlier. Yes. So the thing is, there is no. So what can be one incremental change is that. So once you see, say, uh, I, I get back to that instead of make. So this is true and this is true. Say for example, this is true and this is true. Now setting it to true means you. Uh, what you are trying to say that you are allowing. You see, uh, you are setting your willingness. You are setting your willingness, and he also set the willingness. And then after that, you are checking whether that person is uh, also willing. Then you wait. Now, if you find that that person is willing to make sure that the same person, the other person is also not, I mean, so both are being too courteous. So to avoid that, what you do here, you basically, if you find that this flag is one, then you reset your willingness. That is what I mean. So the, the thing is there here, there is no opportunity for a process to back off. Back off means what? I set my willingness. That means I close my door and I found that uh, so I found I, I closed my door and I found that TD's door is also closed. And TD also closed the door and he says that he finds that my door is also closed. So what what both of us do just stand idle and expecting that somebody to leave. But they, we I say that let me take the class then I'll open the door and uh, it, that situation never happens. So the thing is the simple thing is I sh shut my door and if I check the TD's door is also closed. Then what I do, I basically open my door and take a small coffee break and come back. That's what I can do, right? Are you getting my point? So this is what I do here. I set it to true. If I find that flag one is true, that means TD is also willing. Then what I do, I set it to false. That means I open my door. Sleep random means I go for a coffee break. Now, sometimes it takes five minutes, sometimes it takes 20 minutes. And after the coffee, I again set it, set, set, set the flag to true, my flag to true. I said that again, I'm willing. Is that fine? So this is a kind of, uh, it's a back of algorithm. If you want, uh, I mean, if you find that uh, the other person is also uh, set, other person has also set his willingness and you have also set his willingness. So you become courteous that you said, okay, let me just wait for a while. I reset my willingness. I set it to false, wait for a random amount of time, and again I again I set it to my willingness, and again I keep checking that. Is that part clear? Hello? Hello? Are you getting me? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, so, sir. so what do you think? Will it solve the problem? Resolve the problem? First of all, will it uh, will it ensure mutual exclusion? Will it ensure mutual exclusion? Yes, sir. Definitely, because see, ultimately, what you did is uh, nothing but setting the fa flag to true, and then not actually coming to this point till the other flag is false, right? I mean, till the other flag is true, you are not coming. So if it is false, only they were coming. So you are still doing the same thing. So mutual exclusion is definitely guaranteed. But what you try to avoid is the kind of deadlock situation. So deadlocks are avoided, but can it ever happen that uh, both of us, both of the faculties take the same amount of time to you know, have a cup of coffee. I mean, that, that is quite unnatural and uh, something very hypothetical, but still like both the processes are generating random numbers and because they have considered the same seed, seed value. So both generates, if I generate three, you also generate three. If I generate four, you also generate four. So can it happen by chance? And if that happens, so then what is going to happen? Will they be uh, able to enter into the critical section? No, sir, they'll keep having the coffee. 
Uh, so now they will have a copy come back and set it and again find okay the other person is there again go back so the thing is they will be just repeating the same uh, same set of steps repeatedly repeatedly and uh, so what what kind of situation it is i mean will you call it as a deadlock will you call it as a deadlock deadlock means you, you don't have any hope of getting uh, getting rid of the situation Until unless you backtrack, but is this a deadlock? This is not a deadlock. It's a live lock. Every time you 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 go away with a hope that okay, uh, probably uh, either he will come first or I will come first, and I mean if I come first, I'll get a chance, right? Hello. Yes, sir. So the thing is, now this mutual exclusion is definitely guaranteed, but this situation can lead to a live lock situation. It's live lock. If the process generate the same random number, same 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 random sequence, the processes generate every time. Though it's a very rare incident, but uh, the case cannot be ruled out, right? And this can happen because uh, if uh, the if the growth starts with the same seed, and we really don't know uh, what seed values they have chosen. So this is more or less closer to the solution, but still you you are not you have not solved it completely. So the so the point is in the algorithm approach you see the problem is so simple you are given with just two processes and you are trying to ensure the critical section uh, the access to the critical section uh, associated with r and you tried a different way of uh, different types of logic and you find that you cannot ensure all the four conditions to satisfy so this is just to show that how uh, I, i will not say difficult but how non trivial the problem is okay and uh, only with two processes this is the problem so if you have got n number of processes you know that uh, how to ensure and uh, you know verifying the uh, whether it is mutual exclusion is satisfied whether progress is satisfied this verification becomes even difficult even more difficult so this cannot go on like this. so there are approaches uh, the different researchers they have, they proposed long long back and it was peterson who proposed in 1991 a correct solution i mean that also for two process and in fact before that there are uh, solutions uh, that got proposed okay but uh, we'll stick to this one which is a more simpler version and this is the key idea here you see so what was the key idea so he basically borrowed both the idea so first thing is uh, in the second third and fourth so the first thing is the first problem uh, in the first approach what was very trivial to guarantee it was mutual exclusion right because you you started with a single boolean variable turn and turn can either be zero or be one so uh, it is very trivial to say that either process zero or process one will be inside but the problem was it was strictly alternative so the thing is he he thought of combining both so he said that why don't we Uh, take a shared integer turn and also we take two flags so what the flags will have the flags will indicate the willingness state of each process and the turn will resolve the simultaneity as uh, simultaneity conflicts right can you can you guess the problem so thing is we we are trying with flags and we found that okay this can be managed if we maintain two flags each storing the willingness of a particular process so this is possible but every time you are either ending up with live locks or dead locks or and if you try to resolve both you, uh, you you cannot ensure mutual exclusion so the thing is it will be nice if we can combine both of these so, and that's why uh, that is how peterson came up with a uh, two process solution by combining both the Uh, use of turn and flags okay so as it says use two variable and willingness and uh, the mutual corsican so what it says is that it says that flag 0 equals to true that means it says that i am willing okay and after i am willing what i do here turn equals to he says that i am willing but the p0 gives the turn to the other process so it says it is your turn i am willing but uh, so i just say that i am willing but it is your turn 
now what it checks that if the if it is the other processes turn and also if the other process is willing that means this p0 need to wait are you getting the point so the only change is we just add this step which we borrowed from the first attempt and we considered this step also as a combined decision along with flag one that is what we made and in the similar way process p1 also will after setting its willingness it will set the other processes turn to true i mean it is zero and it will check whether the other process is willing and also and it knows it has given the turn so even if it has give, given the turn to the other process if the other process is not willing it can easily enter here in the critical section okay so will this ensure the mutual exclusion have you got the solution combining the effect of both yes sir it will it will because now again turn is playing that trick and you don't have to think a lot before answering that the mutual exclusion is guaranteed but what about the deadlocks and all deadlocks or live locks will there be deadlock situation that is also not there because even if you set your willingness you are giving the other person the turn okay so now the point is before i mean uh, the only thing is the deadlocks can occur if both get stuck in while so even if both get stuck in while you see the flags might have both true or both false doesn't matter but the turns cannot take same values is that correct so turns is either 0 or 1 so even if both the processes are um, are checking while the uh, getting stuck in the while loop so it it cannot happen that both gets stuck in busy waiting in that while right so the deadlock situation will never occur not even the live lock live lock situation and interestingly enough so if a particular process is willing to enter too frequently compared to the other process that also will happen so it will simply overcome the uh, basic problem of the first attempt because if the other process is not willing so it will not set uh, uh, its willingness and even though if you set your if the if you set give the other process the uh, its turn if he is not willing he will not set i mean he, his willingness is not true so you can simply skip that while loop that means the, the in other way it's saying that i have given you the turn and still if you are not willing so let me enter and access the critical section as many times as i want right but if both are competing and both are willing to take the class then how it will occur it will be strictly alternating because one turn will be zero and one zero and one like that so if both are competing it will be strictly alternating if only one is willing the other is not at all willing so the person or that particular process will keep entering as many times as it wants is that okay so mutual exclusion is guaranteed mutual blocking is also prevented monopolization is also prevented so in fact it solves all the all the related conditions and uh, it satisfies this solution but then extending it to uh, n number of process solution that is also there but uh, we take a different kind of algorithm which is proposed by lamport this is lamport's bakery algorithm to resolve, uh, to to solve it so lamport proposed it in 1974 so the thing is as you can see here the peterson's algorithm was in 1981 so it was not uh, so lamport solution was not after this so it was uh, it was proposed prior to that so i i just talked about this uh, peterson's algorithm because uh, of the continuity or the similarity with the attempts that we made to solve it okay but even before lamport's uh, solution in 1974 there are i mean the two process problem was solved uh, by other researchers okay 
so this is a better way to realize a uh, end process solution compared to extending uh, peterson's approach so that's why we'll stick to this okay so uh, i need another uh, 10 minutes is that possible or is it just almost one hour so i stop it here so this will be the last algorithm in the algorithmic approach and it will be done so in the next class i can start with the semaphores so may i continue or i'll just stop the class what is the overall uh, opinion hello say whatever you feel because uh, there is no point of extending if you are not willing or if there are some other problems may i continue or i continue it in the next class say i yes or no hello hello so you can continue in the next class okay fine so it's better you you, you try to settle it down uh, and I, i'll pass on these slides okay so you can have a look into it it will not take too much time so after we complete this part uh, i think in the next class uh, the main focus will be how we create this shared memory this shared resource we just say that shared in shared resource but is not easily done as it is said so we have to write a additional piece of code to make it shared because we know that nothing is actually shared between two processes except the file handlers uh, say the file descriptors right so how i make a small piece of variable a small piece of or a uh, array uh, shared uh, so that multiple processes which are not even having a parent child relation they can have access to it like normal uh, normal uh, say array loca uh, memory locations so that will be interesting to see and once we do that so these things that we uh, so th although it looks like a code but these are not actually the codes so these are more hypothetical or pseudo codes so you will be able to write something like that and par begin also this is again a hypothetical one and you can you know how to um, run processes parallelly so that will be the focus in the next class